Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you know by now and you have seen uh, the little bush in his speech early this morning uh, where he concluded 13 years uh, of working and conspiring against the international legitimacy uh, through a series of action within the Security Council of the United Nations, but he confronted with the uh, international will who refused his occupying plans against Iraq to control Iraq. He, uh, he failed. He try, he's trying to change the map of the area in favor of Israel and in favor of uh, the oil companies who placed Bush in his presidency of the United States. The speech uh, who, uh, that, he, that this criminal Bush gave last night represent the top of the campaign uh, that started in 1990. Uh, in the beginning, they used Kuwait. And when Iraq withdrew from Kuwait uh, in February uh, 1991, uh, the United States transferred into the weapons of mass destruction. And when we destroyed the weapons of mass destruction at the end of 1991, uh, the inspection committees uh, started and some of the American and British officials in it, they play games uh, in order to stop the United Nation from uh, carrying out all the resolutions of the United Nation that states uh, that they should stop the uh, blockade against Iraq and remove all uh, weapons of mass destruction from the Middle East, including the huge amounts of weapons from Israel. And they continued, uh, such as the uh, American spy Butler, the Australian, uh, who is uh, the head of the inspection team. Uh, he started with the civilian and industrial locations. When he finished them, he went to the military locations. And when he finished them, he went to uh, the private homes and the uh, presidential palaces. And after that, the inspectors made sure that there was no weapons of mass destruction in all these places. Uh, this butler came back again and start talking about uh, uh, isolated incidents uh, and made a big issue of it uh, and made a big issue out of it. In this manner, the United States used the subject to continue the embargo against Iraq to exhaust the Iraqi nation and weaken the Iraqi nation and make them make Iraq submit uh, and uh, the Arabs and Muslims submit to their plans. Last year, Iraq cooperated uh, based on the request of a lot of friends and allies and we allow the inspectors to come back, but the United States tried to stop them from carrying their duties. And they try to impose unbelievably hard conditions made the inspectors, made the, the, uh, the inspectors uh, unable to carry their job uh, until the United Nations Resolution 1441. And Iraq uh, uh, submitted because of the request from a lot of friends uh, all our brothers and the European countries and the Arab League 
and cooperated with this resolution and opened Iraq again for inspection, for complete scanning of Iraq uh, without, without any opposition. Uh, we let them go everywhere they want and we exceeded all uh, expectation. In three and a half months, uh, the inspection teams carried out more than 1,000 operations by using all kind of technologically advanced devices by radiation and underground and infrared and air surveillance uh, and analyzing the earth and the air and they have not found any uh, illegal activity or illegal weapon. And to stop for the uh, inspection teams uh, from discovering the lies of the American, uh, evil American administration, the administration of the merchants of war in Washington uh, and their uh, weak uh, follower, Britain, Prime Minister Blair, they tried to bring a UN resolution to cover them in the war, meaning using the United Nations uh, to issue a certificate of war to push the United Nations uh, to become uh, under their control. The United Nations was established to provide peace in the world, uh, and now the Americans are trying to convert to the United Nations, the evil administration is trying to convert uh, the United Nations into an office of destruction uh, and, uh, and that's a, a bad destination for the United Nations. The world community refused that and the world community in its totality uh, as people and governments rejected these uh, occupying campaigns. And millions of people all over the world walked in demonstrations uh, uh, in a world survey that's uh, unlike any other, uh, that shows the lies of Washington and the danger of this campaign in the future of the world order. And the danger of this campaign, again, is peace in the world and the future of the United Nations. Several courageous countries and governments, uh, some of them are permanent members and some are not. Uh, so they were the majority in the uh, United Nations, rejected this logic. As a result, the, ar the arm, the uh, military campaign that Washington was uh, planning for uh, was defeated and Bush could not find a place uh, to continue and his follower Blair to continue their plane. And they could not find any place in the world except a very isolated rural, rural uh, island in Spain to, uh, to meet together, which show us how isolated the summit was and this little uh, criminal Bush and his followers and Itnar. They isolated themselves in this far away place to carry a summit, the lawless and the outlaw summit, to say something against the rest of the world. The whole world, the whole world reject the world and want peace and those three, evil three, wants war and wants evil. They were defeated and they were forced to take their projects of resolution project out of the security council. Uh, and that was a clear admission of the failure of their campaign. The United States is attacking Iraq for 13 years now. In the 6th of August 1990, by carrying out embargo unlike any other against Iraq, then followed by a military campaign, one of the biggest 
and one of the most uh, ruthless cam military campaigns in the world and continued in their military and economic embargo throughout these years and now the United States could not, despite all these strong campaigns, uh, psychological campaigns, uh, despite all of that, they could not convince the world. Millions of people in the United States, in Italy, in Spain, in Japan, Australia, and the rest of the world countries are standing and saying, no blood for oil. So the whole world was not deceived uh, by those uh, dictators, Bush and his followers. They were not fooled because they know they are behind the weapons of mass destruction. And they know very well that Iraq does not have any weapons of mass destruction, but they use this as a smoking gun uh, to distract the world and deceive the world, but thank God uh, the world was not, dece was not deceived and millions of people walked in the streets of the world saying no uh, war for oil. They know the plan very well. They know that they want to control the oil of Iraq and the oil in the area, to control the future of the world, uh, to control Europe and Japan and Asia and the economy of the world, the world in its totality, and to serve Israel and to serve the terrorist plan, the terrorism plans by Sharon, the head of the terrorists in the world, to convert this area into small entities and divide the area and weaken the area so the whole region becomes under the control of Israel. But the world was not deceived and the American projects fell apart. And in a moment of despair and failure, this hungry little bush wanted to show this desperation and so he gave his ultimatum early this morning, talking about ultimatum and warning and he knows very well that the people of Iraq uh, have never accepted any warning from no one and no ultimatum from anyone and no decree from anyone. The people of Iraq, when the grandparents of Bush were living with animals in caves, we were building a civilization. When his grandparents lived like animals, the people of Iraq uh, have arts and science, inventing writing, the wheel, uh, mathematics, uh, astrology. Uh, he will never be able to deal with Iraq and teach them how to handle politics. And uh, his followers, the British, and his previous masters in Britain did not teach him what happened. They didn't tell him what happened to them when they came to Iraq in 1920s. Uh, they did not have a base then. Uh, in Iraq, we just came out from under the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, who make, made Iraq broken, uh, and the rest of the Arab countries. And despite of this, uh, the tribal men of Iraq uh, stood up and killed the British. And look around you, in all Iraqi cities there are graves of British soldiers. Uh, the Iraqis did not have firearms, but they fought by sticks and swords, uh, daggers, sticks, uh, with tar in the top, and uh, with, with arrows that they used to fish with, it, with, and they took the firearms from the British and they destroyed the British arms. And look around you, their graves are still here. If Blair is smart, he should have remembered the destiny of his grandparents here in Iraq. Bush have this statement and this warning. He wants to cover up his failure 
the failure of his campaign to find an international cover. The whole world's community condemned him. In Beirut, in Sharm el-Sheikh, in every Arab uh, summit, the Islamic summit, all of it. The non-aligned countries in their summits condemned him. So he only had left the Security Council and he failed there too. So he went out of the Security Council with a great failure and he knows in his speech that Iraq will never uh, accept ultimatums from anyone or orders from anyone. The people of Iraq is the only one who chooses his leaders and his system national system and look at those millions in the iraqi streets uh, that are screaming and yelling against bush and supporting saddam they chose saddam this is might be unusual for for bush and the colonial forces they are used to hire and appoint their embassies appoints a governor here and a governor there and destroy someone they don't like and they might send uh, uh, a, a governor or a ruler uh, by aeroplane or in inside a tank but we're telling uh, George Bush that our national uh, will is above everything America tried in its campaign the psychological campaign the dirty psychological campaign against Iraq everything they tried and they failed in all their campaigns. The Iraqi embassies overseas noticed how many uh, Iraqi embassy were harassed. The CIA agents uh, all over the world tried to contact us. Uh, we're not gonna tell you how the Iraqis respond to them. Uh, they reject them, uh, they, dis they, they despise them, uh, and the American knows that very well. Uh, they know that all over the world. So the United States pressured some f uh, little governments to take desperate measures, such as uh, bribed uh, governments, uh, such as a specific entity in Bangladesh. They stole the diplomatic pouch in, uh, the Iraqi diplomatic pouch in Bangladesh. Can you believe this desperation? They opened the pouch. And now they are, they are preventing the ambassador, uh, deputy ambassador in Bangladesh to speak to the people in Bangladesh to hide the truth. Also, the Romanian government uh, acted shamefully. Uh, they, they became mercenaries and agents of the 10th grade. But the countries that respect itself and their sovereignty refused these things, refused to act according to this campaign. And therefore, I'm telling you now that what Bush did in this meeting is an indication of isolation and desperation and his speech is also indication of isolation and desperation and failure and he's pushing himself into a pit of fire so is Blair and now I will receive any questions Mr. Minister, after the President George decided uh, to wage war, please, Mr. Minister, after President Bush decided, uh, along with Blair, to attack Iraq, do you think that any meeting in the Security Council is beneficial? And uh, what's your uh, demands for this uh, meeting? And how do you explain Kofi Annan's decision to take his representatives out of Iraq? Thank you very much. The Security Council meeting uh, is to uh, discuss uh, the working plan uh, based on Hans Blick's uh, request, uh, the head of the inspection team. And he is also submitting 30 uh, pages uh, uh, report. 
and they're supposed to uh, discuss uh, the American violation of international laws uh, based on Bush's uh, ultimatum because this is a clear violation of international laws and United Nations uh, Charter. Uh, and the second item stated the respect, the mutual respect of each member of the United Nations uh, to the sovereignty of other countries. There is nothing in the UN Charter allows any country to interfere in the internal affairs of another country. And that the members of the United Nations are equal in their sovereignty. And that each member of the United Nations should seize any uh, uh, armed solution and uh, do not use force. So uh, this is a challenge and violation of the United Nations and international laws and the basis of the world order. The countries that are represented in the uh, Security Council, their job is to keep peace in the world, and they should discuss this threat against international legitimacy and this violation of the United Nations charters and to all systems based on civilized country countries' relation. Uh, this speech represents violation for all of that. The, the recommendation of Kofi Annan uh, to the Security Council is against the responsibilities of the United Nations. The United Nations uh, should not open the way for uh, invasion and attacks. The Security Council of the United Nations opened the door for American attack. How? Because the United Nations asked the UNICOM force to leave Iraq, the force that's supposed to monitor the Iraqi border, based on United Nations 607 in April 91. In the fifth item article of this resolution, uh, he said, uh, mentioned that this force is to stop any violation to the borders and to surveil the borders against any possible attack from any of the two countries against the other country. So how can this force take uh, do its job if the United Nations asks them to leave? Then he suggests to take out all the human program members of the United Nations. And to start with, this is not a humanitarian program. We do not take charity for anyone. But uh, this is the money of Iraq and the United Nations, uh, uh, under pressure from the United States, take this uh, half of this money and give it to the others. Uh, this is the country that say that they follow the humanitarian rules of the world. Uh, everyone. Uh, who complained that he had headache in 1991, he'll take a huge uh, sum of money. Each one that complained of sexual dysfunction because what happened to him in 1991 takes a large sum of money. And each one who intended to start uh, a, uh, a business and didn't start because of 1991, he takes large sums of money. And they, took all, they take all that from the mouth uh, of the children of Iraq. So this is the money of Iraq in this program. And they called him, uh, they call this program humanitarian program. Okay, we'll call him humanitarian. Uh, so does this program work only in the time of peace? How come? The need for humanitarian efforts is during the war, during the attack against Iraq or during the time of peace. Uh, of course, it's the first. Uh, we want to ask the security, the uh, General Secretary of the United Nations this question and the members of the Security Council. The General Secretary took all his personnel and the humanitarian project of the United Nations and he stopped 
uh, food for oil for food program also. So he violated, in a sense, the resolutions of the uh, Security Council. The UNICOM violation uh, 607, 608. And the Charter of the United Nations, violation of a Charter of the United Nations. And uh, that states the respect of the sovereignty of each country. Nine six eight. Nine eight six. Then he asked to withdraw the employees of the UNICEF and the other organizations. So, do you think the United Nations is taking their duty and their role seriously? When one of the inspectors uh, is late or have a little problem or his car is delayed, uh, at the days of Butler, everyone in the Security Council says that the United that Iraq is challenging the United Nations and the Security Council, and now the United Nations take all the employees, even the employees of the UNICEF, from Iraq, and all the other agencies, and no one stayed except the Red Cross organization. Did this comply with the duties of the United Nations and the United Nations Charter? Not only that, he started to take out the inspectors also. Uh, he always says that this is a first priority, but the peoples in Iraq are not a first pri uh, priority. The 170 inspectors is first priority. 26 million Iraqis are uh, exposed to attacks are not a priority for the United Nations. The United Nations, that the Charter uh, says that everyone, uh, all people are equal, uh, and this is of course taken from Khalifa Omar ibn Khattab uh, philosophy. So how can you say that if 170 uh, inspectors, their life is more important in the United Nations' eyes than the rest of the, than the Iraqi people, which is 25 million people. This is a violation to the Charter of the United Nations and abandoning uh, uh, of the United Nations rules and responsibility. It's a shameful. A question from Al Jazeera. Yes, Al Jazeera. Based on the speech by the American president and withdrawing the uh, inspectors uh, and the response of the Iraqi regime, uh, is this the last hour of war? Uh, along the same lines, uh, would you like to speak to us about the meeting between President Saddam and uh, his uh, military leaders? Uh, is this the last of the uh, peaceful uh, methods and what's your comments on Blix and Al Baradei? If this is the last hours or so, we are the one who's re on the receiving end. The attackers are the ones who plan the attacks. Uh, as for us, we are in our land. We have our commitments in front, uh, before the United Nations and before our people and before God Almighty and before the Arab countries and the whole humanity. They decide they want to attack our country. They are the ones who chooses these hours of attacks. For us, we are preparing ourselves for the possibility of attacks for years now. Uh, we are not waiting for the missiles to come down on us to prepare ourselves. We know our responsibilities very well. And we know those liar, liars and criminals are that are running the administration in America. They are criminals, they are war criminals, they have no moral values or ethical values. Their loyalty is to Israel and to the company that put them in the presidency. They are the ones who decide. We heard today speech uh, by the spokesman of the IEAA. Uh, they are asking their people to come out of Iraq. Uh, their inspectors were doing very well. And the Iraqis were cooperating fully with them. 
and their efforts became very fruitful and great success and progress in all the matters uh, that were uh, suspended uh, between us. And uh, we continues in this line. And both Blix and Baradei mentioned that in their briefings in front of the Security Council. Yes. Isn't it a noble gesture? It is Mr. Bush who should go to exile. It is Mr. Bush that endangering the whole world. Uh, he can say that to some idiots in, the, in his embassies all over the world. Uh, those are not international leaders. Those are idiots not worthy of becoming the presidents of Britain and the United Nations. And both the Iraqi people and the American people and British people despise these people. Uh, this expression, uh, this insulting expression by the dictator Bush, I think both Bush and Blair should, they are the ones who should leave. And the British people and the American people deserve better leaders than these two. They need uh, sensible leaders, not the crazy ones not the idiots. Uh, not a president who doesn't know if Spain is a kingdom or a uh, republic. This is Bush. He is the one who should go. Uh, we came here and we expected that Amr Musa, the general secretary of the Arab League, will be here, but he didn't show up. How do you explain that? Amr Musa is the uh, secretary general of the Arab League, and he said that he's thinking uh, maybe to visit Iraq. Uh, he did not arrange for the visit. We don't know how this was leaked to the media. Uh, he was thinking whether to come or not. We didn't uh, agree. Uh, or about a certain or a specific date, uh, but he and all other Arab leaders are more than welcomed all the time in Iraq. Iraq is opening their arms to the rest of the Arab countries. Thousands of people are coming to us every day of Arabs and Muslims and other than Arabs and Muslims. A lot of people come to support the Iraqi people uh, because this is the battle of Arabs, Muslims and every freedom fighter in the world. So, Mr. Amr Musa, if he wants to come, of course, we uh, uh, can come anytime he wants, uh, based on the charters of the uh, Arabic League, which states the sovereignty of every Arab con Arabic country, uh, and he should work to increase the cooperation between all the Arab countries. He also moves under the... Uh, uh, resolutions of the Arab summits, which uh, states uh, the cooperation with the Arab, with the Iraqi people, and to uh, uh, unite with the Iraqi people to defend them against any attack. So we did not really agree that he's gonna come. Uh, so no way that they can say that it was postponed it. We, because it, it was never settled. We welcome any Arab here in Iraq and every friend we welcome uh, in Iraq. Uh, this is the land of heroism. This is the land where the Iraqi people is defending all humanitarian values, uh, all the uh, international legitimacy. We are in the head uh, defending freedom in Europe, in Asia, in Africa because all those beasts uh, in Washington and in Britain wants to destroy the freedom of the people all over the world. Spokesman of the United Nations said today that the window of diplomacy is not quite closed. Do you think it's still open? The spokesman said that the window of diplomacy is not quite closed. 
Do you think it is still open? The radical solution to open this window is to remove those two oppressors from their office to keep the window of, of, of diplomacy open. away from the policy of the cowboys. Now, the, the door, our door is always open for diplomacy, but it's only if it's not, uh, if it's not for those two who wants, uh, the evil mongers who wants war. Because they deal always uh, by war, and they benefit from war. And they show their hatred toward humanity and the people of the world. The presence of these two in their presidencies, how do you think, uh, uh, we would like to know how these two reached to the position such as the American uh, president became a president to the uh, 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 of the United States. Kofi Annan uh, took certain actions that is considered in reality the first bullet in this attack against Iraq and opened the door to this attack. Do you think, Mr. Minister, uh, that the uh, uh, preparations of this confrontation uh, from other people in the Arab countries, such as Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah in Lebanon, he was calling the Arab countries to attack uh, the uh, American forces by suicide attacks uh, and jihad and fights. What do you think? What's your comment on that? Of course, this, this speech by Mr. Hassan Nasrallah is a faithful expression uh, of the courageous people of Lebanon. Uh, and an example is the liberation of South Lebanon from the Israeli occupation. So this is a heroic and courageous position, should be, proud, uh, should be the pride of all Arabs and Muslims. But he did not express only uh, the conscience of the Lebanese people, but all the Arab uh, and the Muslims all over the world. Arabs and Muslims will be faced uh, this attacks in different ways. And they have the choice to do whatever they want because they know very well that this attack is against not only Iraq only, but Iraq is uh, the first step to Arabs and Muslims that uh, the followers of Israel in Washington uh, wants to attack. They want to beat at, uh, Iraq first because it is the head of the Arab and the head of the Muslims. And because it represents the presence and the present time of Arabs and Muslims. For example, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, uh, was here. And the father of all prophets, Abraham, came from here. And the land that produced the heroes of Arabs and Muslims, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, and the hero, Saddam Hussein, they want to hit this uh, good people. Uh, the struggling people of Iraq, uh, the one that have all these huge resources, but that's a bad choice because the people of Iraq, uh, God's willing and with his strength, uh, have enough resources to stop their attacks, God's willing. CNN. We have done everything according to the resolution of the United Nations and the Security Council. It is now 
the ball is in the court of the warmongers if they renounce their evil plans against Iraq the plans to turn the United States into the empire of evil and to abandon the, uh, the opinions of their own people who oppose these plans. Americans are not all warmongers. We met this morning with His Excellency And maybe you have seen that on a TV. Uh, I had the honor to attend the meeting with the uh, Mr. President, and he was sure of victory, uh, exactly like I am sure that you exist here. Uh, he is relaxed, and he is in a good mood, and he is sure. that he will be able to beat this evil aggression uh, and he is relying on his faith in God and his faith of our right just cause and the capabilities of the Iraqi people the unlimited capability of the Iraqi people How soon do you expect military action by the United States? That depends on the decision of the warmongers. As far as the schedule of the president, he'll be decided uh, by the president. This is not a good joke. There is other jokes that are good, but not this one. And it's one of several jokes of the psychological war. This is not a good joke. We have our own plans to defend ourselves. It's not our job to reveal these plans to you, to everyone else. And we've been preparing for our defense in Baghdad and in the front and expanding the war against the United States administration. The United States and Britain for 13 years now are continuous in their attack against Iraq. And this is not a surprise for us. They will not be able to surprise us. And we expect them to expand their attack against Iraq. Uh, and we know their tricks. And they are liars. And they are warmongers. They have used depleted uranium because against Iraq.
and they deprived the, the Iraqi people of their basic right to life. When they decided to meet in the isolated island of Azores, they, they, they pretend they are speaking about democracy while they were actually violate, violating uh, their own, the will of their own people. Their people rejected, the American people rejected the plans of the wars the plans that uh, the administration is planning uh, for. And still, this administration is talking about the alliance. Look how capable they are of being liars. They are professionals in their crimes. Mr. Minister, do you expect the, that there will be a move from all the Arab countries? Today we heard that one of the foreign ministers in Arab countries uh, said that they will uh, respond suitably if there is any attack against him, uh, Iraq. Another question, sir. Uh, if there is there an exchange of POWs between Iraq and Kuwait, is it necessary now? Uh, can it lead to some peaceful resolution? Arabs should defend their security. We are uh, very proud of any Arab who reject the attack against Iraq. And we express that. We are proud of the Arab people all over the Arab countries that are supporting Iraq. On the official level, the Arab countries took several resolutions in Sharm el-Sheikh and in other places. And the Islamic countries also did the same thing. They said that they reject uh, the attack and they support the Iraqi people and reject any interference of the internal affairs of the area. Uh, a lot of resolutions. And, but this is the low level uh, of support to Iraq and it's based on the charters of all these organizations, the Arab uh, League and the Islamic Summit. Uh, Iraq did not wait for any resolution, but they sent their support uh, by weapons and forces to Mauritania to support them. They did not wait for any resolution uh, or any congratulation from anyone. And when uh, the Al-Bahrain security was attacked, uh, we moved fast and we put our armed forces under the uh, orders of the Bahraini uh, people. We did not wait for any resolution. And when the Zionists attacked Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon in 1976, uh, 67, we did not wait for any resolution, but we sent our planes to Egypt to help Egypt uh, against the attack uh, against Israel and the Zionists in the Sinai Desert. Also in 73, uh, we did the same. We shared in all the battles of the Arabs and we defended the security of all Arab countries. I say, thank God, with the help of God, we did not ask for help from anyone, but we are asked the Arab countries, your security is threatened. Powell, the foreign minister, the State Department minister of George Bush, uh, he said, we want to change the maps in the Middle East. That doesn't mean that he's going to go to the map office and change the actual map. But he means he will cut and tear apart all the Arab systems, all the Arab countries, and convert uh, the Arab countries into small uh, uh, states, so all of them 
will submit to the companies that carried Powell and his masters to their places in the administration. The security of the Arab countries is threatened, and we are telling to our, our Arab brothers, be careful, defend your security. Do not think that this attack is only against Iraq. Do not dream that those attackers uh, will move the Iraqi people. Uh, and destroy the sovereignty and the pride of the Iraqi people under his national leadership. Don't. If there is a, the small ones uh, among the Arabs, those are Kuwait, the Kuwait, little Kuwaiti uh, uh, emirs and so, uh, they are wrong in supporting the foreigners against Iraq. And we will meet them again and we will be staying here and we will continue here but they will go uh, the father bush disappeared and other dictators went and iraq is still here they destroyed our uh, factories the, our bridge we built it better and we became even stronger than 1991 and i'm telling you now in iraq our force our preparation to face the attacks is 1,000 times better in, than 1991. And now, we know that those criminals wants to revenge the Iraqi against the Iraqi people. And we know they want to destroy our installations. But we tell them, we will rebuild it even better and stronger. And we will be even stronger even more than we are right now. And we will still be here. We will confront you. And uh, despite all what you do, in Iraq and in the Arab countries, we will be a role model to the rest of the Arab countries and the other uh, countries of the world. Last question. It was said that Iraq tried to use the inspector and uh, to protect itself and to uh, get rid of any chance of attacks. It seems now the United Nation, the United States succeeded in destroying this strategy. And it seems like war is very close. Uh, they always try to gain time in order to do what they want. Now we're waiting for a miracle. What exactly that can happen in the last minute to stop the whole thing? We don't talk about superstitious things. We are here in our land. Anyone who attacks us, we will defend ourselves. Anyone who wants to move us from our land will fail. Anyone who wants to take our right in free life will fail anyone who will take our freedom will fail miracle no miracle the last minute the last five minutes the last quarter of mile we don't use these expressions in iraq we know the goal of america since 1990 we know the goal we know the aim Mr. President Saddam Hussein, may Allah keep him and protect him and grant him victory. Say that in the summit, in Amman summit in February 1990, he warned all the Arab and he said the United, the United States wants to control your resources, your countries, uh, your position in the world to use that to control the world. We said that in 1990. We know that. We know that Kuwait's plan is a lie. The United States created this lie with the help of the midgets, uh, the rulers of Kuwait. And they, were, they are the spies and the agents for the Americans and the British, uh, them and their grandparents. Even when we withdraw from Kuwait, they continue their embargo using the Security Council uh, 661. 
1990 to ensure the withdrawal of Iraq from Kuwait, and we did. Then they built the embargo even more. 687 to remove the weapons of uh, weapons of mass destruction from Iraq in favor of Israel, of course. And we did destroy them. And now the United States is moving into changing the regimes and the political system. No uh, weapons of mass destructions. They said they want to take the right of the Iraqis uh, and their uh, a national will. They be to become slaves, God forbid, to those Zionists that are ruling Washington. This is the goal. We know that since 1990. And since 1988, they started the embargo since September 1988, after the end of the Iraqi-Iranian war. They started this embargo since then and continued in 1998 and 1990 to make it hard for the Iraqi economy. We know the goal of the United States, but a lot of the analysts and the politicians uh, were deceived uh, by the propaganda from here and there. But look now what is going on. The whole world now understand the goal of this plan. American colonialism. It, they could not deceive anyone from Japan, Australia, America, or Europe. Uh, they were not deceived of the slogans the, of the, the American dictatorship. We know their goals. And we say once more, that we are in our country, in our land, between our people, uh, people who destroyed the invaders before and built civilization before. We build the humanitarian civilization. There are the Sumerian, Babylonian, Ashurian, Islamic, great civilizations, the Abbasites, uh, at that time, Bush and Blair was living with the animals in the caves. So we know uh, our affairs very well, and we are capable very well to defend our rights and our freedom. And we will bury the invaders in Iraq. And we will be here. And we will meet, God's willing, in the future. And those people will be removed. They tried the same thing with Abdel Nasser of Egypt. And what happened? He went to Al-Azhar Mosque and declared that the Egyptian people will fight. And his status went all the way up in the hearts of the Egyptian people and Arab people and Muslims and, and free people all over the world. And he became a Muslim and Arab leader all over the world. And what happened to Eden? He ended up in a mental health hospital. Thank you.